we've had the seven seals where Jesus has unraveled God's plans for this world uh, and now we've got seven trumpets and because the pattern is almost the same uh, it follows the same structure I think what we're seeing here is a repeat of what has already happened so just as the seven seals were about this time period that we're living in now the time between Jesus's ascension and his eventual return to this earth so I think the trumpets are of this same period that we're even living in now and have been for around 2,000 years. So this is a repeat told from a slightly different angle uh, about God's plans for this world. Seemingly in response to the prayers of God's people, an angel takes a censer and fills it with fire from the altar of God. Uh, and that censer is then hurled down to this earth. This seems uh, like it is God's judgment coming upon this earth already. Not in full, but a little foretaste of his judgment for us to experience on this earth before that final judgment comes. As trumpet number one is sounded, so uh, hail and fire comes down from the earth and a third of all the vegetation is burned up uh, with the second trumpet blast. So a fiery mountain is thrown into the sea and the sea turns to blood so that a third of all the sea creatures die and a third of all ships are destroyed. At the blast of the third trumpet, this star falls down to the earth called Wormwood. It lands in the rivers, uh, in the freshwater springs, uh, and they are turned bitter so that many people die because it is disgusting and cannot be drunk. Uh, with the fourth trumpet, the, the sun it is struck uh, and so is the moon, and a third of the stars disappear. Uh, and so for daylight and for night time, uh, they are darkened by a third. <laughs> Now notice that all these things that end up being destroyed are things that we rely upon, our basic needs for food and water uh, and for light. If you like, God is uh, giving us a test as to whether we will rely on him or whether we will rely on these things. I also want you to notice uh, that these plagues very much echo the plagues uh, of Exodus. Uh, and so we see here that they are, in some ways, a bit of a judgment, just as they were a, a foretaste of the judgment for Pharaoh to experience, so they are a foretaste of the judgment for humanity to experience. Well, chapter 9 continues the trumpets and things begin to get very, very weird. First of all, with Trumpet 5, you have these locust scorpion horses, uh, and they are given to attack the people of this earth. Not to touch the people with God's seal upon them, uh, but only to torture those who don't, and to torture them for a limited amount of time. And then the sixth trumpet is blasted, uh, and with that, there come these four horses, uh, riders on them, uh, who are angels, and uh, these horses are given to kill a third of humankind. This is a taste of the destruction that sin brings, I think. Uh, as we give ourselves over to sin, which is something of God's judgment upon this world even now, uh, so we, our suffering increases. Like an addict, uh, we love that which brings us suffering, and so humankind is given over to their sin uh, and to their suffering. Sadly, like with Pharaoh in the plagues of Egypt, uh, the people who survive these trumpet blasts, even they do not repent and turn from their sin to trust in the God who is ready to forgive them. This is a time when he is holding back the final trumpet, a day of his mercy and grace, his kindness where he will forgive. But these people, uh, they refuse to do so. What about for God's people, though? We're not immune to suffering. We still experience times of trial, and yet none, none of this is of God's punishment. For the Christian, all of God's punishment has been spent upon Jesus on the cross. And so even when we're suffering, it's not because of God's punishment. 
And that's what we see here. It is those uh, who have God's mark upon them, his seal upon their foreheads, that are kept from this punishment of suffering uh, in these trumpet blasts. It is those who dwell upon the earth, uh, a word that is used in Revelation for those who aren't God's people. It is those that endure the afflictions of God, these foretastes of his punishment. And so God's people are preserved. They continue to share the good news uh, of Jesus, as we'll see uh, next time. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel uh, so that you can see what comes next. Uh, if you want to know when that video hits YouTube, then make sure you've clicked the bell icon so that you can be notified uh, when that drops. See you then.